See, one way of understanding the goal of our spiritual practice and the nature of spiritual awakening is that is, is that we become unhooked from the mind. We become disidentified with the mind. We break our compulsive uh, fixation on thought. That prior to awakening, the world that we experience is largely a world constructed by the mind. In the unawakened condition, we take that to be reality. And then as we awaken, we start to realize, oh, that's not reality. That's just constructs in my mind. That's just the fabrications of the mind. Welcome to Meditation Changes Everything with spiritual teacher Craig Hamilton, a podcast exploring the deeper potentials of meditation practice and how it can change every aspect of human life. In this episode, Craig explores one of the most liberating meditation practices we can undertake, the practice of allowing our mind to flow freely without giving it any attention. When we take up a meditation practice, Many of us struggle with the seemingly endless stream of thoughts running through our mind. As a result, we tend to see the mind as an unruly animal that we have to tame. But what if there was a different way to relate to our thoughts, one that didn't involve any struggle at all? Today, we'll explore what it means to have a mind like water. We hope you enjoy the show. Here's Craig. Not engaging with the mind is often easier said than done. Sometimes we sit down with an intention to let go of the mind, to not be involved with our thoughts. And it just seems that all there is, is thought. All there is, is this mind processing events of the past, planning for the future, worrying about this and that. Sometimes our meditation just seems like the mind going on and on. And we think, how could I possibly meditate with this mind so active, so relentless, I want to just speak a little bit about having a mind like water, which I believe is a traditional phraseology from Zen. The goal being that we have a fluid, flowing consciousness or mind. So the metaphor of having a mind like water is trying to describe how awakened consciousness relates to the mind, relates to thought, the thought stream. See, one way of understanding the goal of our spiritual practice and the nature of spiritual awakening is that, is, is that we become unhooked from the mind. We become disidentified with the mind. We break our compulsive uh, fixation on thought. That prior to awakening, the world that we experience is largely a world constructed by the mind. It's our, our thoughts, our beliefs, our stories, our interpretations, our labels, our value judgments, that the mind is this, it's constantly just cranking out all of this material, all this content, judging, evaluating, labeling, interpreting, making meaning, telling stories. And that in the unawakened condition, we take that to be reality. And then as we awaken, we start to realize, oh, that's not reality. That's just constructs in my mind. That's just the fabrications of the mind. 
the mind might be a useful tool. You know, it's the only, it's the only one we've got for analyzing and strategizing and kind of figuring things out. So it's, it's obviously an incredibly valuable tool in the right hands, but that it's not reality. It's not me. The thoughts that arise aren't necessarily even mine in the sense that I'm somehow the creator and generator and thinker of the thoughts. So all of this starts to unfold as we awaken and we start to experience this space around our thoughts, around the mind. It's no longer the story about reality. It's just, oh, okay, there's the mind, it's all of its, all of its theories and ideas and stories. But fundamentally we're finding, we find ourselves increasingly in a, in a place of not knowing of, I don't know in relation to the mind. Increasingly, like no matter how much certainty our mind can generate, we're, as we're awakening, we're sort of like, well, maybe, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that's true. And we start to become increasingly enamored with the unknown, with what I don't yet know with all the dimensions of reality that my mind can never know, that concepts cannot touch. It's our theories, our interpretations, all the meaning-making, the labels, it's all just less interesting than the mystery that we're living in. And that's true in a practical sense, meaning all of your, all the mind's ideas about everything going on around us, about other people and their motives and what this or that means and, you know, whatever, even our political, all of political beliefs are all, everything at all in a practical sense becomes less, you know, solid and, you know, rigid and convincing to us. But, but also in a kind of esoteric sense, we're starting to become interested in that which is beyond the mind who we are beyond the mind, this depth, dimension of being. That's always a mystery. It's just the mind can't go there, but we can. We can begin to experience this depth, begin to live from this depth that's not thought, it's not concepts. And so that just becomes much more interesting to us than whatever our mind produces. And so to come back around to the metaphor of a mind like water, what then, what then happens is that the mind, because we're no longer really, it's no longer our primary reference point for reality. It's no longer our true home and the, the place that we are dependent on and addicted to, to help figure everything out because that's just not our orientation as we're awakening. We can just let the mind flow freely. We're not in reaction to it any longer. It's not, you know, thought, thought, thoughts don't scare us and they don't compel us. They don't grab all of our attention because we're, again, not, it's not that central to, to our way of orienting. And so then it starts to just, we can let it flow. We can let the mind flow like water. We can just let thoughts dream do what it does and, you know, at times it's very useful information and it's not, we don't have any anti intellectual bias. We're not in any way trying to push it away. We're just kind of see it for what it is. We're starting to really relate to it for what it is. And then that's a very free, fluid way of being that ensues. So, so we're practicing all of that in our meditations this different way of relating to the mind. And, and in particular, I want to talk just briefly about what I mean by knowing and not knowing. Because, of course, what is the mind always doing? It's always trying to know something. It's always insisting that it knows something. So how do we step out of the mind? We go, I don't know. And we hang out in I don't know, and we 
relate to all of the mind stories within? I don't know. So, so in meditation, what I, just to kind of break it down simply, what I want to point out is that the kind of three different modes of knowing that we are letting, letting go of. And we'll, we'll just call them labeling, interpreting, and evaluating. Labeling is, or it's kind of describing or labeling. It's basically, this is what this is. That is what that is. That's anxiety. That's my mind. That's what spiritual, spiritual freedom feels like. Whatever. It's labeling our experience. Then there's interpreting our experience. What does it mean? Oh, I just felt some tension. I think that means I'm not meditating. I just... I have a very busy mind that must mean like there's important things that I should be paying attention to or, you know, must mean I had too much coffee, <laughs> whatever, you know, it's story making, interpreting, to, to making meaning. And then evaluating is, is the judgments of the good or bad, you know, oh, I'm feeling really peaceful in meditation. This is good. I'm getting there, you know, good, peaceful, easy feelings. Um, or, Oh, I'm feeling kind of fear. Or I'm feeling tension or anxiety. That's bad. I shouldn't feel those. Oh, my mind's quieting down. That's good. Oh, my mind's busy. That's bad. So you see, evaluation. So labeling, interpreting, evaluating. These are really the core mechanisms of knowing. When I say let go of knowing, no need to know. It's no need to participate in those three things. Often in meditation, our thoughts seem to be an obstacle. For most of us who meditate, you know, I can just say having taught thousands of people to meditate and heard questions from as many, one of the most common struggles people experience in meditation is with the mind. It's with this sense that, well, how am I supposed to meditate if I have a busy mind? You know, that is the most common challenge for most of us. And it can seem like, how could I, like, it's, it all sounds good to technically, right? But how can I get some space from my mind? How can I let go of the need to know? It just seems relentless. And this is where it's worth paying some attention to what's really behind that. Why does it seem so hard? And, you know, what could be the secret to inject that space that we're looking for between us and the mind, that freedom from the known that I'm talking about? It's worth noticing that from one point of view, the only reason the mind is the focus of our meditation, it's because we're very interested in the mind. We're more interested in thought than we are in what's beyond thought. We're more interested in the mind than we are in who we are beyond the mind. We're more interested in knowing something than we are in not knowing. Right. I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to indict you here, <laughs> but just, just objectively speaking, we can kind of see, well, yeah, that's true. I guess if I wasn't, if I wasn't interested in the mind, if I didn't, wasn't interested in knowing, if I, I didn't care what the mind said, I didn't regard it as an authority. And I, I wasn't, I wasn't trying to know something. I wasn't compelled by the th thought. Then I, I wouldn't give it much attention and I would, my attention would be very free to meditate. Right. I mean, I'm just logically speaking, <laughs> it makes sense. So, and that's not to make anybody feel bad about, Oh, I'm gee, why am I not interested in what's beyond the mind? Why am I not interested in the unknown? It's not like that. It's, it's not personal. In other words, this isn't like, I'm saying this is 
everybody's challenge pretty much most you know 90 percent of people have a challenge with this at times so it's clearly not something unique to any of us it's, it, it's not so much about our personal motives or our personal interests but it's just this it just can help you get underneath it if you start to realize oh well what if what if i approached meditation and i was more interested in going beyond the mind than than listening to the mind what if i sat down in meditation and i was more interested in what i don't know than in what my mind can know what if i wasn't interested in thoughts i just thought oh thoughts i've listened sort of like well i listen to my thoughts all day long what well, maybe for this half hour I, i'm gonna i'm not interested what if I just wasn't interested? What else might there be other than thought? What else might I discover other than the mind if I just lost interest in it for a little while and, and became interested in something else? What if I was more interested in a mystery my mind will never know? Would I give so much attention to thought? Maybe not. I want to invite us to go straight into this, what I'm talking about. So settle into your meditation posture. Let's just take a few deep breaths here at the beginning, allowing the breath to carry out any tension, releasing it from the body, the mind, or the heart. And as you come to rest in this moment, I invite you to simply let go of your mind. Let go of your thoughts. I want to invite you to have no interest in your mind, no interest in thought, just lose interest for a while. Allow yourself to be interested in that which is beyond thought, in who you are beyond the mind. Allow yourself to be more interested in the unknown than the, in the known. Not being interested in the mind 
won't necessarily stop your mind from trying to capture your interest. Your mind might continue just as relentlessly to present you with stories and theories and ideas and interpretations, judgments might continue to parade those in front of your attention. But now you're not interested, just fundamentally not interested. Because we now have no interest in the mind, no interest in thought, it makes it easier to step back from the mind when we notice we're involved with it. If we're not interested, we can easily just take a step back, let it go. Disengage. Because now we're more interested in the unknown than in what we can know with our mind. We can find it easier to just rest in the unknown. We're not interested in knowing and therefore we have no need to know. No need to figure anything out.
I now want to invite you to gently let go of the meditation. And as you do, just take a moment to notice the quality of your consciousness. Just become aware of how that's changed your experience in this moment. If the approach to meditation we've been exploring today inspires you, you are invited to tune in to a 90-minute online workshop Craig will be hosting called Meditation 2.0, The Miracle of Direct Awakening. In the workshop, he'll share a powerful new approach to meditation practice and guide you in a series of brief meditation experiments so you can experience it for yourself. You can listen to that at freemeditationworkshop.com. That's freemeditationworkshop.com. If you enjoyed today's episode, we hope you'll share our show with others. And please subscribe and rate us wherever you listen to your favorite shows. If you have a minute to write a short review on your podcast app, we would deeply appreciate your support. You can stay connected to the show by subscribing to our newsletter at meditationchangeseverything.com. Each week, we'll send you new audios and videos from Craig, and we'll also let you know when we release new episodes of the show. For a deeper experience of Craig's approach to meditation, consider joining our Awakened Life membership program. Each month, you'll receive in-depth teachings and guidance, including a meditation workshop, four guided meditations, and a live online retreat with Craig. And when you register today, you can receive your first month for 50% off. Go to awakenedlifemembership.com to learn more and enroll. That's awakenedlifemembership.com. Check out our show notes for links to all the ways you can stay in touch with Craig's work. Meditation Changes Everything is created by Craig Hamilton, Susan Fries, Mason Ewald, Stephanie Murphy, Will Bowman, and Richard Klein. From all of us, thank you for tuning in. <laughs>